and we're going to look at how we can troubleshoot uh, vSAN with vRealize operations. So starting off here, we have our PAX system. And I think we have a couple healthcare people here. Uh, so just quick show of hands, the healthcare folks, you know what PAX is. Excellent. So for those of you that don't know what PAX is, um, PAX is a, uh, a, a server that um, when you get an X-ray, when you get an MRI, you get a um, you know, ultrasound, any, any of those modalities, they send all those images to the PAC system. Okay, this is just the central repository for these. Some PAC systems are archives, and others will actually allow you to view the images. So the, your radiologist, your, your doctor, your surgeon can view uh, the images here. So in this example, I have a PAC system, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up my anonymized patient here. And while this is loading, talk a little bit about the infrastructure that this is running on. So this PAC system is running on a vSAN stretched cluster. Okay, it's a very important application to my institution. We don't want to lose any of this data, so we have things protected between two fault domains. And um, you know, this is running on an all-flash array, and it's actually taking quite a while to load here. So as you can imagine, if you were that surgeon trying to open up uh, uh, the images of your patient that's sitting on the OR table, this is just taking way too long. Okay, this application is performing not to its best standards. So meanwhile, over in IT, we're unaware that any issue is going on with the PAC system, except here in Slack, I'm hanging out with Pete, and I see there's a alert that says, hey, I have a virtual machine with high disk I.O. latency. And so vRealize operations, again, we're collecting all these metrics, we're keeping an eye on your environment, and we're able to alert. So I have an alert configured that says, hey, tell me when my I.O. is really high on a virtual machine, and I can send that alert to email. Um, in this case, I sent it to Slack. So we have webhook integrations. Um, so you know, we can bring that data right to you in the best way possible. So here I can see that, yeah, this is my PaxProd1 virtual machine. So I'm gonna let Pete know that I'm on it. And another integration that we've got within uh, vRealize Operation 7.5 that we introduced is uh, ServiceNow integration. So right out of the box, I can actually integrate this with ServiceNow, so whenever I generate an alert, I can open up an incident, so I can track this. Okay, so if I open up my incidents here, I can see this is what we generated. Okay, I've got, um, I can see my impact is, is, is high. This is a critical system. It's been assigned to my group, to the VI admins. Okay, and all this was configured in VR Ops for this alert. And then down here I can see what virtual machine it is. Okay, I see my resource name is PaxProd1. Okay, so starting to get some information here. We're collecting information automatically, and again, for, for tracking of this issue, all this information is right in here. Um, there is a URL down here too, so I can actually open up this URL, and it's gonna launch vRealize Operations right to that alert. So I can get even more information. For example, what is that latency? Um, that triggered this alert. In this case, I can see I'm at 191 milliseconds. Okay, this is just taking a very long time. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I'm starting to suspect maybe something uh, network related. Now, what you're seeing here, if you're using vRealize operations uh, 7.5 or 7, this might look a little bit different to you. And what I'm showing you is actually some of the new features we have in 8.0. And specifically, what I want to highlight is the troubleshooting uh, workbench here. So, oh, Pete just saw that the virtual machine's running low on memory. You gave it some more. Thanks, Pete. Thank Team Blair. Uh, so I can dive into the troubleshooting workbench here. And what we do is, okay, we don't really know what you're troubleshooting, but we're gonna try to bubble up some interesting information for you, okay? When something happens, first question, what changed, right? So we're gonna show you property changes for um, that virtual machine. We're gonna show you any sort of alerts that are happening. And by default, we're gonna show you the first six hours worth, uh, uh, you know, within the last six hours. So that's kind of a sweet spot for troubleshooting. And obviously we can change this range. If this was something that happened at 2 a.m. and now I'm at work at 9 a.m., I can set that range to um, look at, you know, that custom time range. I can set it to, again, the last 12 hours, uh, excuse me, 12 hours, 24 days, et cetera. Um, but here I see uh, my anomalous metrics. I can see that uh, my virtual disk latency is pretty high. So again, I know this, but I wanna track this 
uh, as I'm troubleshooting this issue. So I'm actually gonna pin this metric. Now the anomalous metrics are gonna show us anything that's changed uh, you know, within that time range, within that six hours. So again, we don't know what you're troubleshooting, but we think this might be of interest to you. So I've got this pinned, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna jump back to that a little bit, but I just wanna save this one for later. Then over here, by default, we're gonna show you, uh, this, we can set the scope of our troubleshooting uh, exercise here. So in this case, I've got the virtual machine you know, selected, that's our base object, but we're also looking at one layer below the VM. So we're looking at things like the guest OS, okay, the, the data store. Uh, we can also look at one layer above. So uh, I've got the ESXi system here. Okay, so this is the scope of all the information that we're showing, right? So for example, I can see my ESXi host here within my property changes. But I suspect that I'm looking at something a little bit wider in scope. Okay, I'm looking at, at an issue with, uh, with my vSAN cluster. So I'm gonna open up the scope just a little bit more and we're gonna look at two levels below and two levels above. And so here I can see my MySQL application that's running on that OS, that's running on that virtual machine. Okay, so we're two layers below. And uh, scrolling down, I can also see my vCN cluster. But this is a lot of objects to try to, uh, you know, that could potentially be throwing information at me in the troubleshooting workbench. So I can actually change my scope and say, just show me the virtual machine and anything sort of vSAN related to that VM. So now I've got things kind of cleaned up a little bit. I can see my VM, my data store, my vSAN cluster. And under property changes, I see that Pete gave me four gigs worth of memory. Okay, he saw in the troubleshooting dashboard this VM was running out of memory, gave it some more. So I've answered, what's changed? Okay, if the virtual machine's been powered off or powered on, I'm gonna see those changes in here. Interestingly enough, over in my events, I see an alert that says, check the latency between my two sites, my two vSAN uh, sites. And if I look over here, I can actually see the metric that this, this, this um, vSAN cluster, okay, here's the object we're looking at, my latency between my preferred and secondary sites has gone zero, 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 all of a sudden up to 120. So, okay, now I'm starting to get a little bit more information. I'm starting to understand what's going on here. So that's interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that metric too. And if I scroll down, just collect a little more information, and for the entire vSAN cluster, I can see that my uh, vSAN performance has uh, deteriorated significantly too. So after pinning all these metrics, what can we do with them? Well, we can go up here into, into metrics and we can, we can see everything. If I wanted to troubleshoot a little bit further, like right now I've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on, what might be causing these issues. Uh, but I could also run metric correlation if I, if I maybe wanted to dive a little bit deeper. Show me other metrics on this virtual machine. You know, maybe write latency is really high. Maybe I'm seeing uh, high CPU too, which might point me in the direction of an application issue. Um, so I can actually, again, correlate this metric and look for other metrics that uh, have similar patterns within ops. But again, I, I have a pretty good understanding of, of what's going on here. I've got an inkling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, uh, take a look at, you know, make sure I've got all the metrics that I want in here so I can see my vSAN latency. And I can actually generate a dashboard from this. Okay, so we're gonna call this dashboard PAX prod latency issue. Okay, so I've generated my dashboard. Now let's just take a look at it. It's not terribly pretty, but it's gonna work for our purposes. And it's just gonna show literally, literally those four metrics that uh, we pinned earlier. Now why would I create a dashboard for this? Well, I wanna share this out with my networking team now. Okay, so I could either describe what I'm seeing, so forth, I'd rather just show them. Okay, my network admin doesn't have access to vRealize operations, but that's not a problem because I can go, um, in 7.0 we introduced the dashboard sharing, and what I can do here is I can generate a URL and say expire this after a day, or maybe don't ever expire this, this, uh, this URL. Right, so if I wanted to use this in a knock, for example, I could just create that. Um, if I wanted to embed this dashboard into, maybe I have another monitoring tool in my NOC that I can embed frames into, I could actually embed this dashboard into that tool as well, or maybe I have Confluence or something for uh, that application. We can get you know, just a live view of how things are performing. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna copy this link, and I'm gonna reach out to my favorite network admin, Mr. David Overbeek, and let him know that there appears to be an issue between the vSAN IO latency and the network latency between my two sites. 
and just send him the URL for that dashboard as well. So I'll just show you real quick what, what he's gonna see when he clicks on this URL. <clears throat> there is no authentication. There's really nothing he needs to do. He can just see uh, the dashboard here and try to troubleshoot things um, based on, on what he sees. So again, kind of basically proving that it's not us, it's you. Okay, so we just made that pretty easy. And he wrote back, yep, looks like an issue with the network. So let's wait for this. It's gonna automatically refresh. So again, if we're gonna use this in a knock or something like that, we're gonna see um, you know, the latest information. Yes, sir? Exactly, yeah, so um, the bars, the buttons at the top here will allow me to change the scale. Um, I can change the scale for each of the uh, widgets here, each of the metrics, but I can also change it for the entire dashboard. So here I'm just showing the last six hours, but I can change it out to seven days or a month or six months. And this is on the URL that you send to the Exactly, yep. Yep. So the question was, can we change the time range of what we're, of what we're seeing here? And yeah, I mean, absolutely. So it looks like an issue with the network, and I can see that the latency has gone down. I can also see my latency between the two sites has gone down. So let's check the application once more and just see. And that's how it's supposed to load. So um, again, covering what's in VRLS Operations 8 is the troubleshooting workbench, and then also the um, a new metric for being able to measure latency between primary and secondary uh, sites. We can also look at latency between the witness and the primary, witness and secondary. Um, so those are all new in VRealize uh, 8.0 as well. You know, and that's a really interesting scenario because oftentimes when we have customers that are running uh, an environment where they want highly available uh, systems and they would be employing a stretch cluster, uh, you are solely dependent on that inner site link for all rights. Uh, and so your, your performance is highly dependent on that. And you need a mechanism that really allows you to be able to see uh, what the impact of any uh, connectivity issue that may you know, ultimately occur there. And, and that's really one of the reasons why that's such a good example uh, for any kind of cluster, let alone a stretch cluster.